So here now with what to expect from Kamala Harris tonight, former presidential candidate and former mayor of South Bend, Indiana, Pete Buttigieg, who has been playing Vice President Pence in the mock debates to get uh, Senator Harris ready for this. Mayor Pete, good to see you tonight. Uh, thank you for being nice be here ready. with us. We appreciate it. Um, you know, you heard Peter Ducey's piece there outlining a number of flip-flops on Medicare for All, which Senator Harris said she was for, and then she said she was against it. Uh, the question of Me Too issues uh, was also a flip-flop there that was laid out in marijuana uh, as well in terms of how serious a crime that is. Did you guys work on that in the mock debate scenario? Well, I'm really looking forward to tonight because I think it's going to be a chance to focus on what the American people are most concerned about, the White House's abject failure to protect the American people from the coronavirus, uh, which has destroyed lives uh, and done such dam damage to our economy, uh, the failure of the president to keep the American people safe, the refusal of the president to so much as negotiate on a relief package that's going to uh, benefit those who are hurting economically. Uh, look, Mike Pence is a very skilled debater. Uh, I know him from the time that we were both serving him as governor, me as mayor. He was a talk show host for a long time, and he's very comfor comfortable uh, delivering uh, talking points, some of them outrageous with a straight face. But uh, I'm also looking forward to the opportunity just to have some clarity on the issues that Americans care about most. Uh, we want to talk about uh, uh, health care. Uh, the most important thing that's about to happen in health care is the question of whether the Republican lawsuit to take away pre existing condition coverage prevails in a few weeks uh, when it gets to the Supreme Court. Uh, that's what Americans are worried about, and that's why I think a lot of people are going to be tuning in this evening. Mr. Mayor, you mentioned the stimulus and the stopping of the negotiation and what President Trump tweeted. Uh, they say that that stopped because Nancy Pelosi would not come off the $2.2 trillion and included in there some poison pills for Republicans, and they're saying they'll pass, uh, would like to pass some other single focus bills like checks, uh, stimulus checks directly to families and other things to airlines. Why not do that? Well, the House already passed a bill. It's a good bill, and Mitch McConnell won't even put it up for an up or down vote. If they think it's bad, they can vote it down, but it's really revealing that they won't even take it that far. Well, there's illegal immigrants' uh, support in there. It grants protections for employers who hire undocumented immigrants. There's other things that are not tied to the coronavirus specifically that you know. Yeah, it's true. When you have, have employers, uh, you know, Joe yeah, Biden when you said, have employers like Joe the Trump said yesterday that bringing people together was what you it should want be. To make sure that they don't get COVID. Right. Uh, I mean, you saw the uh, uh, the group of undocumented immigrants, for example, who uh, uh, worked for Donald Trump and showed that they actually paid more in taxes than he did. Uh, uh, the the workplaces that they're in are workplaces uh, where uh, all different people are and customers too. And I think we would all agree that we want everybody, regardless of their immigration status, to be free of this deadly virus. So, just going back to my original question about the things that, you know, when you run for president, you have a record on all of these issues. And then we've seen that record and her stance on them changing over time. So, there's no doubt she's going to be asked about that tonight. Can you give us some insight into what she might say to justify why she was for Medicare for All then and is not for it now, for example? Well, there's a classic parlor game of trying to find a little bit of daylight between running mates. And if people want to play that game, we could look into why a, an evangelical Christian like uh, Mike Pence wants to be on a ticket with a president caught with a porn star, or how he feels about the uh, uh, immigration policy that he called unconstitutional before he decided to team up with Donald Trump. If folks want to play that game, we, we could do it all night. But uh, I think what most Americans want to hear about is are our families going to be better protected than they have been by this president who's failed to secure America in the face of one of the most dangerous things ever to happen to our country? Will the question be answered of whether this ticket is for adding justices to the Supreme Court and for ending the filibuster? Well, as you know, I've always been a fan of uh, bipartisan reforms that reduce the level of politicization in, in the Senate uh, and, uh, and on the court, speaking only for myself. Uh, what I'll also say is that the entire party, the ticket, and I think most Americans agree that the most important question concerning the court is the nomination that's about to happen. And it's unfortunate that Donald Trump and Mike Pence think the American people are wrong in the view that the vast majority of us have, us meaning, again, the American people, also Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, that the next president ought to pick the next Supreme Court justice. All right, Mayor Buttigieg, we'll see uh, if we get some answers to some of these questions when we watch this all play out tonight on the actual stage. Uh, thank you very much. Good to have you here. Thank Thanks you. for the time.